We will now hear from someone who has experienced directly the care provided by Hospice PEI volunteers at the Provincial Palliative Care Centre. Please welcome Brian Hills. Good evening, everybody. I'm Brian Hills. Helen and Nancy came up to me a while back ago and asked me if I would do my talk about my journey. Well, I called them the CSA team. You can't say no to them. So I said, yes, I would. Sam once said, my wife, that I had never met a microphone that I didn't like. Well, maybe tonight just might be a bit of a change in that one there. But I want to tell you a little bit about my journey for the last 14 months. I was married to a wonderful lady by the name of Sam. Now, I called her Sam because when I first met her, I stuttered a bit much, and I couldn't say her real name, Suzanne. So I just called her Sam, and it stuck. Many people never knew that she had another name besides Sam. I met her 48 years ago, uh, winter time, and in January, I sailed down south to fight Congress, uh, communist aggression, and I, met, and I came back in April, and I met her again. I proposed in May, and we were married in July. We had 46 wonderful years of marriage, ups and downs, same as everybody else has in their marriage. She blessed me with two beautiful daughters, Lisa and Paula, who are with me tonight. I love you very much, both of you. Our life changed a little bit here a while back ago. We came to the island in 2000, and I just loved the island, and so did Sam. And we really thought that we were living the dream, as everybody was talking about. And then last March, down in Cuba, we walked on the beach and had a drink and we were just saying how wonderful our life was and we had much more to look forward to. But Sam had a little bit of a hitch in her giddy up in her hip and he said, well, once we get rid of that, then life's really going to get back to normal. Little did we know that when we came back, Sam got diagnosed with stage four bone cancer that had metastasized for the breast cancer and it was stage four and we didn't have much hope. And that's where my world of home care, hospice, palliative care, came to the forefront of my life and my family's life. And for the next while, we fought and we thought that we could bend this thing, but you could look into the doctor's eyes and the nurse's eyes and there was, there was just nothing but sympathy and no hope. One doctor, Dr. Baker, who's here tonight, was with us the whole journey. Never will forget you, Dr. Baker. So anyway, Sam's disease started to get worse and she had to go back to the hospital for a couple of things. And when she was coming out, they said that she couldn't go back upstairs anymore. We had a split entry and we had stairs. So we have to make, either she stayed at the hospital where she did not want to be at, or we do something with downstairs. So we immediately put a bed downstairs, a hospital bed, she was very specific about that. And we made a little kitchen downstairs, and we made it as best as, as we could, but Sam wanted to go upstairs. That was where her home was at, her kitchen, her patio, and from the patio to her special spot, which was her pool. She loved her pool. So one day I talked to Dr. Baker, and I said, is there any way that we can get her up here? So she called in an occupational therapist, a physiotherapist, and I don't know who else, but they were all there that day. And we got Sam upstairs. Little victory, and I tell you, it was a big victory for us. So she gets upstairs, she sits on the couch, she said, uh, I think I want to stay here. So <laughs> we moved the bed, we moved everything back upstairs where she wanted to be at. And we could take her out to the patio, and uh, we could, she could look at the pool, but she didn't want to go into it, she says no. But then one day on a hot July day, we talked her into it, and there she was in the pool with her funny little hat, and a glass of wine, and the biggest smile on her face that you've ever seen, and we thought that was the biggest victory we ever could have. Everything was in little victories, nothing, we knew what was coming, but we had to have little victories, and that's where we were at. Sam deteriorated some more, and was getting worse, and uh, pretty soon at night time, we had to be very careful where she was at, and her pain got worse, and I was always chasing this pain. I was chasing everything. We had charts, we had everything, but I couldn't catch the pain. Then the nurses would come the next day, or Dr. Baker, 
Dr. LeCoeur, they'd come and they'd change the medication. We'd be fine for a couple of days, but then we'd be chasing it again. And her, she never, she never cried. She never, she never complained. I did enough of that for both of us. And she, um, I knew then that uh, we couldn't keep her at home for much longer. As much as we wanted to. We just couldn't do it. Um, she needed better care. And the only better care there was was at the palliative care. So finally, I was on a Friday morning. And Kathy, one of the home care nurses, uh, called and said that there was a bed in palliative care for us. We thought we had won the lottery. Can you imagine your world when you think you get a bed in palliative care that you've won the lottery? That was that world that we were in that day. But we thought we had won the lottery that day because there was going to be a relief of Sam's suffering and perhaps a better life, a better care for her. So the ambulance came to take Sam away. And as the ambulance was loading her into the ambulance, she asked, would you please stop and you please turn me around? And she turned around, she wanted to have one last look at her home. There wasn't a dry eye in that driveway or any other place, except for Sam. Sam never cried. Then. So we get to palliative care, and now, oh my God, my, my emotions are all over the place, and how she's going to react and everything. Well, there's a welcoming committee at palliative care, for Pete's sake. And these nurses, these wonderful nurses, there was, Sam called them, there, there was, she called them special K's. There was Karen, a couple of Karens, Kathy, Kathleen, and they were called special K's. And then there was Heather, and there's a whole bunch. And there was Dr. Baker waiting to meet us at palliative care. Well, within the next 24 to 48 hours, her pain was under control. All her other symptoms were under control. And she was being pampered, and she was just, she was enjoying everything, every day that she had. And these people would come in and they would refresh the towels, and I didn't know who they were. And they would redo the flowers, and, and I said, who are these people? He says, well, they're, they're hospice. I said, aren't they wonderful that they could come in and volunteer and do that kind of stuff? But what also really impressed me about hospice coming in and doing that was the respect that they had for the intimacy of being in that room with someone who was passing away. It never left me that they would come in with such high respect. Sometimes they would come in, you wouldn't even hear them come in. They would do things, they'd maybe give Sam a little pat. Sometimes I would come in and they'd be sitting there having coffee and telling stories and laughing and having a good time. I had so much respect for hospice and, and they were a big part of that life. But Sam was deteriorating. Her condition was. And it was our 46th wedding anniversary coming up. And there's a lady by the name of Blanche, and she's here tonight, and she's one of my angels. So I said to Blanche, it's the 46th wedding anniversary coming up. Can we do anything? Leave it with me, she said. Did leave it with me. And so the next thing I know, we celebrated our 46th wedding anniversary at Palliative Care. And it was a wonderful occasion, wasn't it? It was just, it was just a wonderful night for everybody. We surprised Sam. Uh, as, and as we wheeled her in, she just looked at me, just calling you stunned arse. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> we, we had a wonderful night that night. It was, a, it was, a, it was just it was a, a, a victory, a small victory. No, these are all big victories to us now because every time that we had that we could smile and enjoy each other's company was a victory. But Sam deteriorated further. And a quarter after eight, Saturday, on August the 12th, Sam passed away. But she passed away with no pain, comfort, and most of all, she had her dignity, which was so important to her. And Karen, the nurse, was on shift that night. She's here tonight. I can never say thank you enough, Karen. Again, it was, it was overwhelming for me. I, uh, I have never felt such pain in my life, nor do I ever wish that pain upon anybody. I couldn't breathe, I couldn't speak, and uh, I thought my life was over. But somehow we got through that night, by God, my two girls, they were with me all the way. And uh, we got through that night. And then the next morning we got up, we had to make funeral arrangements, and we, each day, all you did was just try to get through that day. You didn't, 
Don't look beyond that because it was overwhelming. I spent 35 years in the military, in the Navy, submarines, went through some pretty harsh things. Nothing ever, ever came close to what I went through here by losing Sam, my beautiful wife. But each day went on and each day would pass into the next day and then pretty soon I was getting on with life. And then one day, Blanche called me and said, there's a bereavement group, would you like to be a part of that? I thought, Jesus, I think I'm okay, I don't need that. But you don't say no to Blanche either. <laughs> so I said, yes, I'd be there. She says, right, it's, it's Tuesday at seven o'clock, be there. Yes, Blanche, I'll be there. So I met 10 people that night and they were all in the same situation as I was, different. As someone once said, we were all reading the same book, but we were all in different chapters. And so we started, the first couple of times was pretty, everybody was holding back and not talking that much. But then, as we started to know each other, then we started to become friends. And then the stories would come out, and by the end of it, I had 10 new friends, and it was just wonderful. I carried on there, so then I went and, I forgot one thing. So then in November, I thought, well, this hospice group, I, I think I want to be a part of that. So I went to Blanche one day. I says, Blanche, I want to volunteer. And I want to be part of hospice. And she just looked at me with a lovely smile that she always has. She says, not yet, Brian. Not yet. Come back again in the spring. She knew better. She knew that I wasn't ready for it at that time. I still need healing. And she was absolutely right, which hurts me to say, but she was right again. <laughs> so I came back in March. And I said, this time I went and saw Helen because, Ellen, because <laughs> I didn't trust Blanche. <laughs> So I says, Ellen, I'm looking to volunteer. Yes, great. Get in the front desk and we'll, we'll get you on the front desk. So I started meeting people at, at the front desk, going through the same thing as that we had gone through in the previous months behind. And I could feel their pain. I could feel their, you know, their, their sorrow. And I hope that I was uh, respectful of, of that situation. But I found also that it helped me to, to go forward. In June, Blanche, can't say no to Blanche, said there's a couple of men, would you mind talking to these men, Brian? They says uh, they're having a difficult time, would you mind talking to them? I said, no, not a problem, Blanche, again. <laughs> and so uh, we, we formed a small group of men who have lost their wives in the last year. I have five new friends again, it's really nice. And we sat there, we just talked about our wives and our time and uh, Every time that you talk about it, it seems to help a little bit more. Especially when you say it out loud sometimes. I don't know why that is, but it is. So my journey continues. It's, uh, but I want to say tonight, hospice to me is like a team. And, um, well, Al Dale is a good friend of mine out there. He served 30 years in the Navy. I served 35. And any time that you could be on a ship's company, where the ship gelled together, it was a good ship's company, it was a great feeling to be a part of that team. You could wake up in the morning and you felt as if you were doing something special, you were on something special, and damn, damn it, you were special. That's how I feel being a small part of hospice. I see the home care, I see hospice, I see palliative care, all working together as a special team. And to me, it was all the same to help me through this journey where I'm at. And where I'm at today is, I can look back where I used to have tears and cry. I sometimes smile and think about the grand fond memory that I have with her, with Sam. I share it with my daughters, my beautiful daughters, my good friends. And uh, life will continue and I'm it's forever thankful for them for being a part of my journey, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brian.